Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about what I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer. There are quite a few things I wish I knew. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video. Subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell because I upload whenever I want. Well, let's get to the content. What I will talk about the, in this video is what I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer. This is around the time that I started my petroleum engineering degree at the University of Texas. And as I pursued my petroleum engineering degree, things I wish I knew that helped me become a little bit more prepared as I entered into the professional world. I hope you can relate to some of these because, or I hope you are already preparing for this well ahead of time based on the pieces of advice you've gotten from other people, including myself. Either way, this is meant to be an informative video. Please note that all my thoughts are my own and not based on any of the associations that I'm with. All of these thoughts are based on my personal experiences. So if you have anything in your mind that you'd like to share regarding what you wish you knew before you became a petroleum engineer, feel free to comment below. The first thing I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer, it isn't about what you know, it's about who you know. I learned about this early on in my career when I entered my petroleum engineering degree at the University of Texas. A lot of professionals that I met mentioned to me to make sure I go to the engineering career fair, make sure I make my presence known, hand out my resume, make sure I get my resume checked by the Engineering Career Assistance Center. And a lot of it had to do with getting to know people. I realized it was less about understanding Darcy flow, unconventional reservoir engineering, and petroleum economics. Not to say that these topics are not important at all. These topics are extremely important and they're meant to assess your competence in a petroleum engineering degree. But it isn't always about knowing the latest technical thing. It is about who you know, who can help you get to your next opportunity, who can help you find leads, who can help you develop relationships, for example, and who can help you really flourish in your career. The next thing I wanted to mention, and this is a little bit more on the technical side, but I wish I knew a lot more about unconventional reservoir engineering or unconventional in general. A lot of my curriculum was based on conventional reservoir engineering, and that isn't to say that is a bad thing at all. In fact, that helped me with my PE exam in petroleum. So I have no regrets in learning about conventional reservoir engineering. Those are the fundamentals anyway. But I wish I had a couple classes in unconventional reservoir engineering, or I wish I was given advice to take unconventional reservoir engineering classes or understand how unconventional reservoir engineering worked or unconventionals worked in general. That way I felt a little bit more prepared on the technical side when I entered in the industry. I had to start from scratch when I started out as a production engineer when I graduated from the University of Texas. But I felt like once I immersed myself into the world of unconventional reservoir engineering or the world of unconventional engineering in general, I was able to play catch up and now I'm able to teach a course in unconventional reservoir engineering as well. So that isn't to say that you have to learn something well in advance in order for you to be able to teach the material. I just wish I would have learned it earlier, but that's probably classic Yoshi. Another thing I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer is how important it is to maintain relationships. I was so focused on my studies and so focused on bringing up my grades that I didn't focus too much on establishing relationships with other people. Needless to say, I'm not very attached to my graduating class and I wish I was. 
I wish I was able to connect with alumni a little bit more or fellow alumni a little bit more in order for me to feel a little bit more in the community with petroleum engineers. I have been able to do that by joining the Society of Petroleum Engineers in my local section and international section, and I was able to make my presence known. But had I started this off earlier in my career, my petroleum engineering career as an undergraduate, I think it would have made things a lot easier. So I strongly suggest people who are pursuing their petroleum engineering degree or any engineering degree that they are, if they're watching this video, that focus on the relationships, establish relationships with your classmates earlier on. You never know who's gonna help you out in the future. And you never know who you're gonna meet to that not will only help you out, but you can help them out along the way. It's a two-way street. But relationships are very important. As humans, we are social creatures. And this is something that is very, I think is, is extremely important. Another thing I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer, it's, it really isn't about the technical skills sometimes, it's also about the soft skills. Soft skills are one of those things that are unteachables. You're only taught about them when someone makes you aware about your gaps or things that you're doing right, or things that you are learning in life. For example, if you're the first thing that came into my mind were Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. If you ever did Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts and learned some of the essential skills and learning how to work with a team and learning some life skills, for example, those are some of the unteachables. They happen, you happen to gain those experience, gain those skills through the experiences. Technical skills can be taught as you get exposed to them, for example. That's why companies stress so much on the behavioral components of interviews, because behavioral components of interviews test you on the unteachables, that things that are hard to teach to people unless they experience it in their life. There's a maturity that people end up getting whenever they obtain soft skills. And I've heard this debate before. It's not just soft skills. They're also known as essential skills. So I strongly suggest you develop those soft skills, those, those essential skills, I should say, rather than stressing so much on the technical side, because the technical skills can be taught. Technical skills can be obtained no matter what walk of life that, you, that you're on. But the soft skills, for instance, are those unteachables that people are able, that, that people will be able to connect with you a lot quicker if you have them. I have a video that stresses more on essential skills, but some of the examples of soft skills, I think that I should talk a little bit more about this, but examples of soft skills are networking, communication, teamwork, establishing relationships. Those are the things that are examples of soft skills or essential skills. I strongly suggest you focus on those, those unteachables, because those are that, that displays maturity in a candidate whenever you're interviewing for internships or for full-time positions as an undergraduate or even as a graduate. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit sentimental, but just be yourself. One thing I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer is how important it is to be authentic. There was a question that I learned about when I was preparing for my MBA interview at Chicago Booth, and it stressed a lot on authenticity. The question said, how would your friends see you outside of work? What do people at work say about you? Why are those two different? That question talks about authenticity. There's definitely some barriers that you put up at work that you don't necessarily put up in front of friends. Now, there are some topics that are not appropriate at work, which I understand, but there's a personality that you exude at work versus when you exude with your friends. And it's a lot easier to live your life when you're a lot more authentic at work and with your friends, as opposed to trying to put up a front in one environment versus the other. I realize that in this industry and in any industry that you go to, we're all human. We all seek connections. 
We all seek establishing relationships. We all seek wanting to be heard, wanting to be understood, and wanting to provide value wherever we go. And with that being said, being your authentic self is extremely important. And being in an environment where you can be your authentic self is very important. And finding that environment is extremely important too. It's not just about the technical skills. It's not just about developing those soft skills as well, but it's also that secret sauce, the, the culture, the what you bring to the table in being your authentic self. So I strongly suggest thinking really hard about how to be authentic, how to be an authentic leader, an authentic individual contributor. It's really important because I think a lot of things will come to you when you when you do that. And that's a wrap, everyone. Those are the things that I wish I knew before I became a petroleum engineer. As usual, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. If you have any other comments that you wish you knew before you became a petroleum engineer, please comment below. I'd love to start a dialogue with you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.